Working with oneself is truly the essence of spiritual growth. To come face to face with yourself, your personal self, your weaknesses, your fears, your hopes, your dreams, your desires, your needs, and to see that these things are not the nectar of life. They are indeed the cause of all problems in life. A need is a disturbance. It is a discomfort. It is not fun to have something going on inside of you which is tearing at you, driving you, pushing, pulling, reacting all the time so that you have no peace, so you have no serenity, so that you have no reasonable direction in life other than to fulfill this need. In the New Age we speak so much about freedom. Where is your freedom? You are at the dictates of this unfulfilled energy. So whereas some people could look at a need as a opportunity of fulfillment that is equivalent to the yogi that if somebody comes and is punching you in the arm and it hurts a lot that to you the most exciting thing in life is this person stops punching you. That may be true but that's not a terribly positive life. So the yogi, the spiritual seeker, does not look at these disturbances as good and then say the reason they are good and positive is because if I fulfill them they will stop disturbing me. Well, why are they disturbing you to start with? So one who is interested in true growth sits in the seat of self, in the seat of witness consciousness, in the seat of awareness within themselves and comes face to face with these energies, is not afraid to see what they are, to see what they are doing inside, to hear the demands they are making and to watch how much disturbance they can create in your inner being. If you are able to come face to face with your personal self, you have made the first step in freeing yourself, in freeing the soul, in freeing your being from the dictates and demands of these lower energies. Lower energies are never satisfied. There's nothing wrong with them. They are just lower vibration rates. They are lower flows of the energy. When they are flowing and vibrating at lower rates, they hold everything down at those rates. When you are depressed, you are not feeling well, everything looks dark. Everyone looks like a trouble. Even people that you are happy with no longer look so appealing anymore when your energy is low. When your energy is high, everything looks good. It is the flow of your Shakti, the flow of your energy, that determines the quality of your life, not life itself. If you are at peace and you are feeling tremendously high and a lot of love, no matter what was going on outside, you would say you had a good life and you are happy. If you were depressed and nothing looked promising but everything outside of you had wealth, beauty, people liking you, all of that, but still inside you were depressed, you would say you had a terrible life. So it is strictly, always, completely, the inner flow of the energy that determines the quality of your life. And this is why the yogi is the one who has committed themselves to straightening up or working with the Shakti flow, the prana flow, 
that is within their being. And they put the same amount of attention, energy, focus on working with these energies that the worldly person does in getting the outside situations of people, places, and things the way that they think they need to be in order that the energy not disturb them. Right there is the line that determines where you will end up at the end of this life. If what you do is permit these lower energies to dictate whether you are happy or not, to dictate how you treat other people, whether you like other people, whether you want to do this, whether you want to do that, everything is being dictated by the whims of these lower energies. If you let that happen and you utilize all of your will in order to control the outer situations so that you are most satisfying these needs or fears, whatever they might be, that are going on inside of you, you will end up at the end of life completely lost. Because all you have done is used your will to manipulate outer situations so that you are feeling the least disturbance of a disturbing energy. Needs satisfied immediately become unsatisfied again. Period. That's all. Why? Because a need is a flow of energy that is coming out a certain way. When you release that energy or pattern that energy with something outside, as long as that energy can flow through that properly, it is not disturbing you. In fact, it feels good because it is flowing. Is it rather than being depressing, there's this experience of energy exchange and the energy flows out and participates or shares with another person, place, or thing. That is a nice feeling because the energy is flowing properly. What happens if that energy can't flow properly? It starts to burn inside, doesn't it? It's energy. If the energy can come out and find its way of expression, then it feels good. If the energy is blocked, either inside or out, and it can't do that, then it causes all sorts of tension, all sorts of anxiety, all sorts of discomfort, doesn't it? The mind gets weird, the heart starts to hurt, all of your energy flow gets fidgety and so on. Therefore, once you see that, you see that only if you manage to manipulate this person to treat you the way that the energy needs for you to be treated so that it can flow decently, only under those conditions are you okay. And so you become tremendously attached to a person, place, or thing. It has to stay exactly right. They have to say exactly the right thing. They have to behave exactly the right way. Everything has to be just so, doesn't it? Why? It is because of the energy. You don't even understand the energy, and yet you're willing to be at its dictates. If the energy says, he has to talk to me like this, or I get weird, then he has to talk to you like that. That's all there is to it. You'll do anything you can to make him talk to you like that. You use the carrot and the stick, but you're going to manipulate this person so that you can get your energy flow properly. What would happen if all of a sudden the energy changed its energy and decided well, it has to be another way? Then you would do everything you can to make it be that way. You only know that something makes the energy flow feel right and something else makes it feel wrong. And somehow you think that's you. It is not you. It is no more you than the wind that blows outside of you. It is a wind that blows inside of you. It is an energy flow. You are the consciousness who is aware of the energy flow. Once you get that, it's over. That energy flow has nothing to do with you. It is an object of consciousness. It just happens to be flowing inside instead of outside. If every time the weather changed, you had to have things a certain way, people around you would go crazy. When it's sunny, you like to be treated this way. When it's rainy, you like to be treated this way. When it's windy, you like to be treated this way. The poor person, you know, got a chance with you. And then you think you're happy because you get the person who does good in the sunshine. And the next thing you know, it's raining for three days. You have to go visit Seattle or something. Well, you don't want to be with that person anymore. It don't feel right anymore. It don't feel right. Imagine that.
All they do is start raining. Come on, I want to play this one out. He said, well, I don't feel comfortable around you anymore. I just don't feel it. I don't know. It's just I felt it and I don't feel it. And so you go find yourself a rainy day person. All right? It feels wonderful. Then the sun comes out. And all of a sudden, the thing's changing. You say, Gee, what happened to George? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just didn't feel it. I feel it now. And what happened to Mr. Rainy? What if that was what went on? Is that so different? Is it so different than what really goes on? It's just that the weather changes inside. And you change the whole outside based on the weather change inside. It's the funniest thing in the world. And you don't even understand the weather. You don't even understand what makes it be the way it is. You don't understand why one time your energy comes up and wants to go that way. Another time your energy comes up and wants to go that way. Another time the exact same way that made it come up and go that way nauseates you. Makes you feel uncomfortable. Come on. You've been in there a long time. It's like that, isn't it? That's right. And you want to know what? It's perfectly reasonable. What's not reasonable is that you are not willing to step back outside the energy and realize that the only thing that doesn't change in your world is you. You the witness. You are aware that the energy is coming up and going toward this person. And the same you is aware that the energy is coming up and going toward that person. And the same you is aware that the energy would never want to come up for that person, aren't you? You are in there. You are conscious. You are the self. That being, your conscious, centered being, is your only hope. It is your only way out. If you do not hang out with that being, you are going to step into a stormy ocean that has a hurricane going on. And wave after wave is going to come flying up and wipe you out constantly. And you're going to be up, down, up, down, up, down, because that is what the energies are doing. You don't go up and down. You say, oh, yes, Mickey, I do. No, you don't. No, you don't. You watch her when she's down, and you watch her when she's up. You experience what it's like to be depressed. You experience what it's like that every word somebody says you feel like crying, that you don't want to be near anybody today. You feel just turned off to people. Who's aware of that? Are you aware that you feel that way? Are you aware that sometimes you can't wait to see people? You're just all enthusiastic and excited. You just can't wait to see your friend. Are you aware of that? Yes. Who is aware of those things? Me. The same you. The same you is aware that you don't want to get near anybody. And the same you is aware you can't wait the next day to get near someone. Yes. Because there is only one of you in there. So the energies go up and down. You don't. You don't. You are just aware of these changes. It is so easy to get out. All you have to do is be willing to experience the changes instead of defining yourself as the changes. Today we will watch melodrama. Tomorrow we will watch enthusiasm. The next day we will watch her fall in love I wonder what will happen the next day. Do you think TV's entertaining? Wait till you start watching this stuff. It entertains you every moment of your life. There she is being jealous. Oh my God, I haven't seen a dose of that since I was 15. So you watch that. What do you care what you watch? One channel's as good as another. The point is, it's you watching. Once you can attain to that seat and you realize that anything you do to change it, you're dead. Anything you do to mess with those energies, which you don't even understand, you don't even know why they change, you don't even know why they jump toward that person and are repelled by that person, you don't even know where they come from. Why are you listening to them if you don't understand them? And be willing to do anything anybody wants if they'll just stay here. Because what? Because when they're here, your energy's okay. And when they're not, it gets all weird and I can't stand it. It's like fingernails ripping at my heart. Anytime she or he wants to say something, you do think, you gotta just be crazy. 
put up with anything and everything. Why? Because your energy is completely at the dictates of the behavior of this being. It is not free to have to keep something a certain way. It is free that you be okay no matter how it is. That's what free is. Free is that if he's in a good mood and he comes home, you have a good time. Free is if he's in a bad mood and he walks right in his room, you have a good time. You should be happy. Your energy should be okay no matter what is going on. Your energy should not be okay because of what is going on. If your energies are okay because of what is going on, I guarantee you that they can be not okay because of what's going on. It works exactly as polarity. If he or she has the ability or some situation, finance, this, that, career, anything, has the ability to lift you to this level, if something goes a certain way, I exactly to the micrometer of where it took you, if that thing doesn't happen, if the opposite happens, it will take you to exactly that level made. To whatever degree your energy is attached with one polarity, it is repelled to the other. And so you are completely conditionally okay. And you just keep going up and down. Why? Because nothing stays. Nothing stays the same. It's a changing world. You can try all you want to keep it fixed. Nail it down. Glue it. Sign all the contracts you want. It doesn't stay the same. No two atoms are ever in the same place at the same time. And no person ever feels the same way from one moment to the next. Why? Because you live in a dynamic universe that just keeps changing. Now the question is, is that okay with you? Or are your energy so messed up that the only way you're okay is with super glue? You gotta glue it all fixed. Then what? Then you have to check on it all the time, don't you? Is it staying where it belongs? Is it behaving the way it's supposed to? Is he thinking the way he's supposed to? Is everything the way it's supposed to be? And you just keep having to work. now. That is one work that you can do. You can do the work of holding it together in the name that these energies flow the way they want to, which is neurotic. Or, thank God you have a choice. You don't have to do that. You don't belong to anybody. You are the self. You are the great light of consciousness. You are ever the same awareness watching a human Watch life. That's who you are. There's not a thing wrong with you. There never was and there never will be. Doesn't mean there's not things changing outside. Doesn't mean there's not things changing below you inside. But you, the consciousness, are free. And you're a very, very great being. But in order to do that, to be free, you must free yourself. And so this is a different work. Keep in mind what we just talked about was the previous work controlling everybody else (laughs) being in charge of every little thing so it matched these little nuances of whatever your energy feels at the moment and if you don't do it you suffer and if you do do you feel alright and you're always afraid of suffering even when you feel alright you're afraid of suffering so it keeps you limited even if he says he loves you tremendously you say for how long I've heard that before that's what happens with the neurotic self can't ever get real high can it of course not it's scared to death of what getting hurt of pain of having things change. The alternative is to take on the real work, the work of yoga, the work of freeing yourself from these energies. You are not these energies. You are the subject, they are the object. Someday you will understand where they come from. You can. And someday you will understand why they change constantly and why they make so much noise and why they're so demanding. Needs can be really demanding, can't they? And fears can be too. You know, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. It gets like that, can't it? It can get so uptight you can't even see straight. What is that? It's energy. It's disturbed energy. Your work is to get out. Your work is not to control those energies. The art of getting out, the science of getting out, is very, very deep and very subtle. If you try to control the outside so you don't have disturbance inside, you become the slave of the outside. We already said that. If you try to control the inside so it doesn't disturb you, 
you become the slave of the inside. Now, whatever the forces are that are causing these energies to change, which you don't even understand, you have to fight them. And you find yourself fighting all the time. You find yourself struggling, fighting, pushing, pulling, suppressing. These energies are heavy duty. It's like catching an alligator that's whipping around all the time. How are you going to catch it? It's impossible. Yoga teaches that your work is not to control the world so the energies be relatively okay or to control the energies. You don't have to do that. Your work is to remain conscious in the midst of it all. That's all. You don't have to control it. You only have to remain centered. You only have to remain deep calm, deep sense of awareness that the outside is doing this, the inside is doing this, and here I am. Here I am. Who? Me. What are you doing? Watching. Being aware. That's what I'm doing. I'm being aware. And my heart feels like it's being ripped out trying to follow that person over there just because they're walking away. It feels like that. Wow, weird. Well, do you want to run after him and throw yourself in front of her and beg that she doesn't leave because you don't want your heart to feel like that? No. Why? Because anything I do from that moment forward will just be because I'm afraid my heart's going to feel like this and I'll never trust the person again and I'll be scared all the time that they'll do it again and it'll feel like that all the time anyways. No, I don't want to do that. Well, do you want to make believe that your heart's not doing that? Just turn around and walk away, you know, and not even look back. And if it makes any noise, just go, shut up. Treat your heart like that? No no. Why? Because someday, years from now, I find myself on a psychiatrist's couch talking about the fact that I did that. Or years from now, when somebody else comes along, I won't be able to look them in the eye. Because all I'll remember is that someday they're going to walk away too. And I don't want to feel that again. Therefore, I won't get close to anyone ever again. So I don't want to do that because I already saw what that does. Anybody ever see what that does? beat the heart up a little bit and shelter shut up and push it back down there you want to be around 10 years later when this stuff that you shove down there during the midst of its greatest pain and all this energy just can you push it down there sure can you run out after the person and manipulate the situation and say things that you don't really mean and do things that you don't want to do and change yourself I'll change myself what you mean is I'll put on a different face I'll wear different clothes I'll be totally different, I swear I will. Just don't make me feel what I feel. Isn't that amazing? Just don't make me feel what I feel. What's it got to do with him or her? Nothing. You don't want to do that, do you? You don't want to do that anymore. Because then it's not you that they love anyways. It's some made up thing that's only there because you're afraid of pain. You're killing yourself if you live like that about anything. So you neither sell out and run after this energy because you can't bear to feel it, nor do you sell in and beat this energy up so that it stops bothering you because that's suppression. In both cases, you're trapped. There is only one way out. It is the middle path, the path of the center. You sit it out. You keep your hands to yourself. You let take place what naturally will take place outside. You let spring come when it will and fall when it must. You let the waters flow when they are high and get dry when the weather is dry. You let the sky be blue and the grass be green. You permit the nature of things to be what they are. It's easy to know the nature of things. You don't have to be a Taoist. You don't have to raise your hand and say, but how do I know what the Tao is? That's so beautiful. You just answered yourself. The Tao is 
What is, is the nature of things. It is what it is without you messing with it. It is because it is, because you're not messing with it. You can be sure of one thing. You mess with it, it isn't. It is what you manipulated. Why would you manipulate? Because there is some energy inside of you that's not okay. And because it's not okay, it has to either project or repel or do something about the outside to try to be okay. Therefore, you're not okay and now no longer is the outside. So the Tao is very simple. The Dharma is very simple. Get yourself out of the way. It is of no importance to the universe what you want. Make it no importance to you. Your preferences have no reality. None. They are all the reflection of the problems with your energy. If you feel lonely because you have a problem with your energy, you're going to have a preference to have people around you. If you feel lack of respect for yourself, lack of fulfillment, you're going to have a preference to succeed at things, to be number one at things, to be competitive and winning at everything. Why? Because you're not okay. And so you need these things outside in order to be more okay. If you do that, you are messing up the outside and you will never know truth. Truth is what is without you. Truth is what God made. It's all just creation. It's here. It's real. Why not let it be? And the answer is because it hurts. Simple. I didn't mean to ask a rhetorical question. The answer is because there's a reason I'm trying to screw with it. <laughs> because it makes me feel better. Because I got problems in here. Good. Now leave it alone. Leave it alone. Why? Because it brings your problems up. Who wants that? You do. Why? Because I said that was your work. That's your work. Your work is to work these things through. So the outside does its dance. It's impersonal. It has nothing to do with you. It's just doing its dance. If there is something that it happens to hit or disturb, or bring up inside, you take your seat of consciousness. You do your mantra. You meditate. You become aware that your highest goal is to remain aware. That's all. Not to stop these energies. You don't want to stop these energies. If there's dirt under the rug, you want it out. Otherwise, you stay with dirt under the rock. So you permit the outside to dance and you permit the inside to go through its changes. Can you do that? Yes. You are capable of sitting there and watching this energy come up and being aware that this energy is coming up. If you are willing to sit there and leave it alone, let it come into its equilibrium. Let the outer energies unfold. Let the inner energies come to a balance. You become free. Every day you become freer. Every day you become more capable of opening your eyes, meeting people, meeting situations, being fine. You just happen to all of a sudden be fine. You don't feel the fear you used to feel. And if you do, you're just watching it for a minute. You don't feel the anxiety. You start feeling excited because the sun came up. You sit down on the earth for a minute and you feel it on you and it just feels right. You start getting right. Your energies start being right. Why? Because you're not using your energies or the world in order to manipulate and suppress and control your own self. This is the reward of being willing to sit this through. There is no energy you want to touch, believe me. You don't want to touch the outside. You want to experience the outside. You want to live, dance, participate in the outside, but you don't want to touch it. You don't want to be in control of it. You don't want to be in control of it. And you sure as heck don't want to touch the inside. Boy, if I can help you skip that stage, you don't want to go through that. You don't want to sit there and get that inside together. 
You want to know what it's like? It's like a lake that has some ripples. And you've gotten a glimpse of how nice it would be for there to be no ripples. And so you decided, I'm going to stop those ripples. You tell me how you're going to stop those ripples. You come back every year and tell me all the different ways you try to stop those ripples. You're going to wipe them clean with your hand. When they start to come up, just kind of rub your hand across the top of them. What will that do? Make more ripples? Well, if you see a ripple over there, you could jump in and try to see where it's coming from underneath. What will that do? Make more ripples. And someday you will find out any energy you touch, you disturb. And if you just leave it alone, the natural forces will come to rest. And that's the highest. And if a ripple needs to start because a leaf dropped in, then a ripple needed to start because a leaf dropped in. What's the difference? Just be aware that there's a ripple. It's fine. It'll pass. You don't have to touch it. You just have to be willing to experience it. This is how you learn to live within yourself. You are willing to experience creation. What's wrong with that? It's okay. The reward is peace. Not a bad reward. The reward is the peace that Christ talked about. The peace that pathes all understanding. No matter what goes on outside, you're okay. Each day unfolds, and you get to experience it. If it disturbs energy inside, it's an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity for another thing to come up, and you get to sit there and watch it. What is it you don't want to come up? Eventually, nothing. Once you see the process and see how beautiful it makes you and how beautiful it makes life and how great is your existence in the self, in the consciousness, you would never, ever, ever come down and touch it again. Better to tolerate it. Better to experience it. Not touch it. Touch it, you have to do it again. Experience it, it's over. So this is your work. Your work is on yourself, but not through control. It's an easy work. Your work is the willingness to remain conscious in the mist of the wind. What if that's all that's asked of you? That's all that God asks. Will you let me dance outside and in and watch me? Let me entertain you. That's what the divine force is saying. Will you or will you freak if I dance this way? Will you grab if I come over here? And will you push if I come over there? Or will you let me do my dance? My dance of creation. I want to dance outside. Yeah, it all dances, doesn't it? And I want to dance inside, real close to your heart. Just let me dance, and everything will be okay. Everything will be fine. You will find a peace, and you will find a love that is more than any human love could ever give you. And because you find that love, you will feel love for every human. And you will feel love from every human, even if they hate your guts. All you will feel is love, because that's all you are is love. This is what unfolds inside if you are willing to pay the price. And the price is keep your hands to yourself. Always. But don't suppress. You have to keep all hands, your inner hands too. The inside stuff comes real close, doesn't it? Say to yourself, that's beautiful. That's what you say. No matter what's coming, ooh, that's beautiful. Just let it come. And it will pass right through. Your job is to relax. How do you know how you're doing? Can you relax? Always. Can you consciously and willfully relax your heart Relax your shoulders, relax your hara, your mid-stomach area. 
abdominal area here. It gets very tight. Relax it. Consciously relax it. No matter what's going on. Every moment. Every moment. If you get on the phone to talk to somebody, like that, it goes, no. Relax. Talk while you're relaxed. Actively relax. Actively relax. Don't fight. Just relax. When you can do that every moment, of every day you will see that you're growing tremendously and you will find that you have less and less problems don't think about it just have less and less problems don't analyze it don't try to see why just have less and less and you will find that you're okay with things and someday you may find that you're not alright with something and that's the day to rejoice Because that's the thing that stands between you and where you want to go. That's the thing that was suppressed. And you thought you were okay, but you still weren't as high as you wanted to be, were you? That's why. Because there was still something in there that could get you. All right? Then get all excited. Don't blame anybody. You want this to happen. You get all excited and you meditate a little bit more, you get more conscious, and then every day you walk out into that and you see whether you can relax through it. And if you can't, then get more excited because it means it's actually that strong. Did you know there was something in there that was that much stronger than you? Come on, man, this is your house. Well, you got robbers in there, people stealing your consciousness. Who's going to tolerate such a thing? If somebody was in your house, you'd call the police. Well, if there's some energy in your house stealing your peace, stealing your right to be your being, trying to get down to work, isn't it? You don't want that thing running your life. And don't you ever blame it on anybody. Of course, there have to be changes outside to make this thing come up. Why? Because you buried it so deep it would never come up. The shovel of life has to go down there digging. And it finds it. So be grateful that it comes up. Your work is inside. Now do you understand inner work? That's inner work. Your outer work doesn't matter. Your outer work's a game. It doesn't matter. What matters is what are you doing with your inner work while you're doing your outer work. If you can free yourself within, you'll be free for the rest of your life. If you get something outside, it lasts for a minute. Lots of people have gotten lots of things and they're not happy. You do this, you will be more than happy. And nothing will ever be able to take your peace away. Nothing. That is worth working for. That is the work of a yogi and a yogini. You do this work. Mm, Check it out.